producer spotlight with Mr. Instro. You can be a beat maker and not be a music producer. But when you're a music producer, you don't have to be a beat maker. Only on the element. Only on the <laughs> element. Hey, am I, Mr. Instro, right now? Are you very excited? Ah, give it. Excuse. Oh, I'm gonna say, guys, ten seconds, ten seconds. I, let's, I, go, I, let's go, let's go, let's go, bad, let's go, bad, let's go, let's go. All right, it's just gone in twenty six minutes before we hit. Ah, uh, what am I doing here? Right, it's just gone twenty six minutes before we hit uh, seven o'clock. It is the element, and it is the producer spotlight with myself and Mr. Instro. Yeah. And as you can hear, Mr. Instro is here. Oh, that was beautiful. Yay! Ah, yo. Oh, that exceeded it. my expectations. Did it on him? I think I deserve this. Yes! Honey! Yeah. <laughs> you do. Let me tell you, man, it exceeded my expectations. <laughs> 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 uh, the way you sounded before. <laughs> I, didn't know. I was like, I... My expectations are not high. It at surprised all. me too, bro. But you know, you know when this thing that you do is like God driven. Yeah. God steps in and goes, Okay, you need me now. Yeah. I right, cool. I got you. Now he's like, Okay, get to see Sure. You can, you can handle it from here. How are you, Instro? I'm good. I'm good. I'm awesome. Um, it's been uh you know, like having these shows in the evening, man. Like <laughs> so much happens during the day and you're like you just wanna unwind, but you gotta work. But it's good. Like, yo, we're looking at a producer that is man, one of one. I know I like Ooh. saying that about people, but but Travis Scott is one of one. He's one of the special ones. He's one of those that God looked at and was like, you know what? I'm gonna make an, a great example of what poten- your your potential can you know produce for right. you, and he's so incredible and he's done so much and I'm looking forward for us to chop it up, you know, talk more about him. All right, so I've got the bio. Can I, can I just uh, for those who can see these things? Go, but let's talk about it. Sure. Hey, Travis Scott. It's too long. It's not a game, but. It's too um, long. I'm gonna dust off my my news reading skills. Thank you, Aziz. Let's go. And let's see how how I can do this thing right. So Travis Scott is a Houston-born hip hop artist mm-hmm. and producer affiliated with Kanye West's Good Music and Ti's Grand Hustle, homie. And uh, he became known during the early 2010s for his heavily auto-tuned half-sung, mm-hmm. half-rapped vocal style. Within seven years of his mainstream arrival via West's Cruel Summer compilation in 2012, on which he served as a co-producer yep. and featured artist, Scott attained numerous platinum singles as a lead artist including a streak of four that began with antidote and then uh, which we got from rodeo yes. yes he followed with a pair of number one full lens birds in the trap sing mcknight yes yes and astro world all the while assisting in platinum singles headlined by the likes of rahana on mm. beat better have my money oh, yeah. Bang. i wish Bang. i played on the show Bang. scissors love galore and uh, Drake's Portland and working extensively with Quavo mm. as Hancho Jack. On Jacques Webster, Travis Scott grew up in a suburb of Houston and began making music as a teenager. Mm. That's quite a bit for us to go on. Yeah, I know. We've got... We've, All we've ready. So I was super surprised because we speak about uh, this show and this feature quite often. When mm-hmm. I was like, ah, oh, Mr. Instro, who's the next producer spotlight? And you said Travis Scott. I went, huh? <laughs> what you mean though like for the whole hour yes and you're like yeah 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 so i'm ready to get my notebook out because i'm really going to get educated today okay. so apart from everything that we just uh, read and all of that yeah why is travis scott special and a one of one as you say uh okay so it's because i it feels like his journey has always been destiny driven mm, um like you know like it's like yes he he paid his dues you know he 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 stayed working but more than anything it feels like his mindset had always been set on not failing Mm -hmm. and he found himself in very influential uh uh, very informational influential rooms and spaces Mm -hmm. that made even his personality come out and you know those people had a liking to him and eventually the music also spoke so i think he's special because it seems as if it seems as if from from his accomplishments that he always knew 
you know and as a a, a creative as someone who who makes music and 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 does artistry yo that imposter syndrome is crazy yo it will it will mess up with you literally it will it will mess up with you hard 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 yo hard. And you start thinking you're not, you're not good, or you're not. And it seems to me that like Travis Scott has has always been a confident person, more especially in his art, in his mm -hmm. craft. And I later realized uh, it was because he actually put the work in. It's it's the stuff that we were talking about last week. That sometimes it's not really about being talented. It's just about putting enough work 100%. to do whatever you need to do to make sure that you are considered the best and with travis scott man like he's just gone above and beyond and has done well for himself as both an artist uh, and a music producer which is something i really want want us to 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 unpack but now did you guys know that travis scott is not his real name Hey, <laughs> yeah, his name, Travis, is, his name is Jacques. Yeah, his name is Jacques is, Webster. Is 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 Jacques Berman Webster the second? Uh, named I'm, after I'm his so father. I'm so sorry. The uh, the second. He's okay. the second. Generational yes. and stuff. Uh, I, I, I was like, what? Why then choose an AKA like? That sounds like a name and surname. Like exactly. A legit name. M and more so like Travis Scott. It doesn't get whiter than that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, why would you call yourself Travis Scott? And um, he named himself after his favorite uncle, right? Mm. His his name, I think, was Travis. And then he also uh, chose the Scott from his influences from uh, Kid Cudi, mm -hmm. right? Kid Cudi's real name is Scott, mm -hmm. okay? So he made, <laughs> he made Kid Cudi's real name his aka does is that make sense that not crazy it does make sense yeah so it, a very interesting thing to know and um i think us as artists don't limit yourself with you know your typical mr instro it doesn't get as like typical as that you can choose any other name you could look at the people that influence you and you could embody their characteristics and just have fun with it you know uh we, we tend to take these things these musical things too seriously sometimes especially because it's such a big business mm -hmm. you know there's so much money to be made there's so much money to be lost so we we, we more often than not forget to have fun with it you know True. and i feel like travis scott did exactly that you know he just started you know doing his thing and seeing what was happening i mean from an early age he was playing drums yeah okay he used to play drums and uh he is quoted I saying quote. yeah quote. He, he is quoted saying drums didn't get him girls <laughs> and for me wait what <laughs> Oh, sorry, I say wait, why? Because are they supposed to? Yeah, hell yeah! Imagine, imagine a drum player not getting girls. That that's just it's it's it doesn't make any sense. No. Every drama, every single drama knows that once you are there, especially if you're dope, man, these ladies will come to you like Is that flies. A thing? It's a thing. Okay, maybe it's me. Ch Chules, you're you're another lady in the room. Mm -hmm. Drummers, sexy? No. What? <laughs> Drummers? No. Yo, yeah, no. guys, you haven't been to enough shows then. I'm telling you guys, drummers, mm. drummers have all... all sorry, net without sounding crude, but all that banging. No, no, no. I'm no. telling you guys, you guys don't understand. Oh, in sweet. fact, in fact, it's not just about the drums. It's like if you play an instrument, I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. Like girls would just gravitate towards you. Look, I understand the the playing an instrument. I'm, yeah. I'm just for me, drums is not high up there. I'm not like, oh my god, what? did you see past up too? What? You That's know? my dude. I'm, I'm, and he's incredible. Yeah. But I'm like, hey, who's that playing the bass? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that on the guitar? Like, you understand? Guitar or, or even like the keys. I'm like, there's something about the keys. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, not so much the drums. So that's why I was like, ah, are the drums supposed to get you the gills? Trust me, let me tell you. Drums are like, you're the most energetic 
out of all of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, if we're if we're looking at hip hop, right, 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 and 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 what we consider pop culture now, I think the drama would be the most active, and more often than not, you'll see that they'd be the most physically appealing, because what. What happens? They use their entire body uh-huh, to, okay. ma- to to make sure that the instrument actually you know works and and so for me I think yo man I understand I understand why Travis Scott was like you know what screw this forget about drums I'm not getting girls I'm like I right, cool I get it man listen this drum chat is so super <laughs> interesting so I'm actually I'm actually gonna do something we're gonna we're gonna put this part of the video out okay Robot Boy plays the drums yes yes he does I want Robot Boy to tell me if there's truth to this concept that drums bring the gills trust okay so that's that's my there's a uh, church especially <laughs> a church you ah, you you ah, Mara church is something else uh, no, 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 no 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 let me tell you ne. let me tell you okay you don't have to even play an instrument to to be up to me for, 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 for. we know this church Church is tricky. Yeah. Church, if you are, if you have a voice, if you can sing and if you are you in the sing. choir, ah, ah. yeah, no doubt. No if doubt, you are the pastor's true. child, anyway. Okay, let me play a song. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play you Quavo and uh, Kid Cudi with the last, and then we're gonna come back and not expose ourselves as much, but keep talking about Travis Scott. It's got 15 minutes before we hit seven o'clock. It is the element on the rocking real and relevant in massive metro. Only on the elements, it's just gone at 10 to 7. If you just walked in, good evening and welcome to your favorite hip hop playground. This is the producer spotlight every Wednesday. Myself and Mr. Instro come through. He selects a really incredible producer, spotlights them. We take a look at uh, their background, where they grew up, how they got into music, the great moves that they have made, and mm. what it is that we can learn mm. what it is from them and apply it to life in general. That's what's so dope about our culture and uh, creativity in general. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be in line with exactly what the other person is doing but you can take inspiration and apply it to yourself tonight we're taking a look at travis scott super interested to hear more about him as a producer uh myself i'm not well versed as far as travis scott production so this is going to be super super dope for me mm-hmm. mr instro yeah, boy, yes where are we going now okay uh so we're going uh where uh i usually go every week okay every okay. week I tell producers that you guys are the directors of the movie, right? Yes. You guys are responsible for making sure that everything comes together. Mm-hmm. And you cannot, you absolutely cannot get that done if you don't have good relationships 100%. with people, right? If you don't have great relational skills. Ooh. It's very important. Can you just say that one one more time? Even I'm going to kill the kids. <laughs> it's so important mm-hmm. to have good relational skills. Yes. Right? Especially if you want to take a leadership position and if you want to make sure and oversee everything that it 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 gets out perfectly, right? So, uh Travis Scott Definitely, like I said earlier, you know, he's just got a really dope energy about him. Yeah. Um, all his musical peers that he met, like most of them, you know, in his come up, um, you know, would immediately gravitate towards him because, mm-hmm. you know, he was he, he just had good vibes. And, um, you know, uh, after some while producing, you know, d- trying to do this music thing, he moved to New York. Mm-hmm. And he was sleeping on friends' couches, you know. But Hectic. but the thing that was important was that he was seeing just Blaze often, right? Oh. So he would go to his studio and do some recordings and watch and just see, you know, how how everything goes. And shout out to Just Blaze for allowing that to happen because I think we have a very uh, a very whack. Uh, culture of mentorship here uh, here in our country right. you know um, there's a lot of people who have the knowledge a lot of people who've got the expertise but unfortunately they're not willing to share their mentorship unless you pay them or unless they have some sort of incentive in return why do you think that is mr instrument and i do definitely agree with you um i have my own um theories around it but as somebody who has actively been in this space a lot longer than i have yeah um why do you think that could possibly be okay well yeah like there's so many reasons there's a lot of reasons but i want to highlight mental incarceration okay i want to highlight the fact that there's a lot of people who are still stuck in an apartheid 
state of mind and what i mean by that is there's a lot of people who are experienced who 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 have everything you know and can actually share mm-hmm. but don't because they are under some kind of a misconception that whatever it is that they possess is going to end true i just forget understand? who said it but um someone very influential i'll remember their name a little bit later on yeah. but the thing that matters is they said people operate from a place of lack yes, yes absolutely absolutely so when you operate especially black south africans like unfortunately we are so used to you know going through hardships mm. and 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 just yo know, life being hard that we don't understand the concept of abundance mm-hmm. you know and accepting abundance in our lives so we find ourselves thinking yo if i give this guy the key to 1 2 and 3 that means they're going to be better than me right which means i'm going to lose my place and which is some crazy ass thinking if you ask me you know for for me i feel like there's so much space for for us to be who we are especially as artists like i can't be like the kind of artist that the next person like no matter how i try i can emulate yes i can try and talk to them and spend time with them but i can't be you i True. won't be able like the you are the special part in the whole creative process yeah. do you understand which is the other thing remember 2 weeks ago i was like yo i felt so bad because i spent a lot of um um like the first half well not half but like the first portion of this year yes. just talking about yo man you need to be able to do other things don't yes. really concentrate on whatever which isn't a bad thing but i think it's also important to acknowledge your power yes. you know you are powerful there's nobody who is like you and the, the moment you realize that you are unique then you can go into any industry any field no matter how saturated that industry is the fact that you are doing it yeah is what counts that's you know? true because like you say um we could we could both be let's say content producers yeah but what's going to make the things different is i am me i come from a particular background i have a particular vantage point i approach things in a particular way Absolutely. and same with you so i think you're very very right and i do think that people generally operate from a place of lack and uh, so one of my theories around this idea of of mentorship not necessarily being at the level that it should be is this idea that you know let's say i as aziza on my come up to being you know this great powerful person mm. i had to go through a lot of struggle a lot of obstacles and i had to fight for a lot of things and people have romanticized this idea of struggle yeah. um as paying your dues yeah. and i think that that's where it comes from people feel like you need to struggle in the exact same ways that they did to get where they are forgetting that they struggled like that and opened those doors yeah. so by the time i arrive or whoever comes behind me the thing that you had to bust down to get through you busted it down yeah. so i don't necessarily have to go through the same process of figuring out how am i going to break this thing down how am i going to get That's through it. this thing and um i think that there's merit in the fact that i didn't have to bust that down you know something that i don't yeah. and you can help me in that way and also i think that people who are in powerful positions sometimes feel so powerful that they feel like they can't learn from somebody who is quote unquote for lack of a better term um lower than them on the on the chain right. of things right, or in right, the hierarchy right. yeah. and i think that's also n- not dope because you're also doing yourself a disservice yeah that's the and that's what the sad part is the sad part about being or not wanting to to mentor somebody is that you're also missing out 100% you know what i mean you you're missing out on an opportunity to learn something new from someone who's hungry mm. you know if there's anything that i've learned personally is I would have never known how FL, FL Studio works if I didn't take the time to watch my my younger brother you uh-huh. know work on it like oh snap so you can do this it's like yeah I mean this is simple but because I don't come from that age or that school I would know how easy it is to do whatever it is you know right. if if my mind wasn't switched on towards you know being able to learn from somebody who might not have the same experience as I do 
But by the way, just to mention, my brother has uh, like a lot of experience, right? Like he's, he's, I can't mentor him because he started making beats like a, a year or two after I did. All right, for those who might not know who Mr. Instro's brother is, shout out to Hope Mass. Hope Mass, yeah. Yay. Like like he's been he's been making beats since he was like eight years old. Wow. Right? So Hectic. Yeah. So and like I could at least hope as our as our first guest for producer spotlight. <clears throat> it's called a seed. I'm planting. Yeah, it. plant, plant. You, you it took a year <laughs> to get us to an hour, so I don't know how long it's gonna I'll take to get to guests. <laughs> but yeah, like I think it's it's important to to open our minds, you know, to o- open our minds to learning. And shout out to Just Blaze for opening his doors and letting Travis Scott do his thing, right? right? And from New York, he moved to LA very shortly. He, uh, he spent about three months in New York and went to LA where he subsequently met Kanye West through his manager, Yay. Mike Wax. Right? And you see, the thing about fate, fate is so beautiful because at the time, before he met Kanye West, he ran into T.I. Hey. Okay? T.I. is out there. He's like, yo, I've heard some stuff about you. Come, let's let's talk, you know? And he heard some music from Travis Scott and it was like, yo, let's sign Travis Scott, you know? And imagine, like, I can imagine just being that guy who has, you know, so much potential and all I have to do is just pick, you know? But, <laughs> but, but I mean, you know, looking at his journey now, I can safely say that he never chose the easy way out, Mm -hmm. you know, because Kanye West obviously was a lot more harder to get hold of, a lot more harder to liaise with. He had to like wait all the time for him to, you know, to to be able to talk to him and, 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 and talk business. So it eventually happened and he released his uh, first album, uh, first mixtape. In fact, he played it for Kanye West first. Right. And then he was like, yo, we're going to have to do some tweaks there, here and there. But I like it. And they worked together under good music. And they did the Owl Pharaoh uh, project, right? Mixtape. And that was a huge success. It was well received. And that kind of broke... Uh, Travis Scott as an artist. Uh Okay. All right. So wait, it's two minutes after seven o'clock. We're going to take a short one so we can officially open the second and final hour of the show. We're going to take a music break thereafter. And then we're going to go into the full story of Travis Scott. Yes. So uh, that's what it is tonight on the producer spotlight with myself, the pristine queen and Mr. Instro. It's just gone seven minutes after seven o'clock. Ooh, angel numbers. I must look it up. Seven, seven. Uh uh Okay. Uh Don't care me. We're talking philosophical things out here. We're to- you were just talking about fate. Yes. Fate. I was. I was. The numbers was. play a role. It's fine. It's fine. I'll find the the meaning of angel number seven seven, okay. and you'll find that it resonates with you as well. Mm. But beyond <coughs> the fact. Beyond the fact that it's seven minutes after seven o'clock, we are still in the middle of the producer's spotlight. You know, Mr. Instro is actually an incredible producer and an incredible mind. It's just... But it's fine. Uh, Yo, it's okay. all respect from this side. Whatever, my man. Whatever, my man. <laughs> Let's talk about the things that you want to talk about. Yes. It seems like that makes you a better person. So if you just join wow. us, we are spotlighting uh, Travis Scott on tonight's producer's spotlight. Yeah. Uh, we were at the part where he moved to LA. Yes. And uh, he Met started... Met the TI briefly. Yeah. That didn't work out. And then he came up with Kanye and like, it was magic. Okay, they released the first mixtape, Al Faro, and um, that was well received. And they started working on Cruel Summer. Mm-hmm. Now, I need to tell you guys about Cruel Summer because that album for me kind of like was a, a definitive album because it had like a, a change in sound. Mm-hmm. This was when uh, Travis Scott, Mike Dean, um who else was there in the mix just please was there but like he was like now it's good music and obviously my dude no id you know mm-hmm. uh but more on a administrative level um and they and they did the the cruel summer uh project which right. had uh 
Big Sean, Two Chains, Two Chains, um, Common. There was quite a few of them, you know, who who were gonna form this this major major record label, right? right? And um, it's it, it it sounded to me like a new we were entering a new phase in the way we we heard or produced hip hop because right. it had a lot of like a lot of effects. You know, when you listen to something and you're like, yo yo yo, in this song. They were creating a movie. <laughs> they were, you know what I mean? They weren't just like they weren't just doing a, a song. Okay, chorus, verse, chorus. No, no, right. no, no. I am a, this nigga in the morning. That's a story on its own. Right. You know what I mean? That hook is like, yo, okay, what's going on, bro? Like, what are you trying to tell us? You know, and Rick One coming in there. You know, the morning very 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 like imaginative very creative and it's one of my favorite albums ever 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 like Yo. i love i love cruel summer because it's it's just so fresh you know it's it's such a fresh and it doesn't it didn't at the time when it dropped it didn't sound like anything that was out at the uh -huh. time yeah, yeah. and it was very important because as soon as it came out everybody was doing that sound now uh -huh. auto tune became a bit more official oh, yeah. that was like now it was the standard you know what i mean like it was like okay especially that that rap singing thing like a lot of like they didn't start it it it, it obviously started somewhere in, in the south in atlanta but like it, it, it was they legitimized it mm -hmm. you know they made it cool and it worked you know with the kind of stuff that they were using technically mm -hmm. that was like okay cool let's take this thing to the next level and they did that right and then at the same around about the same time they were doing uh they were producing rodeo yeah rodeo very interesting uh, uh story about rodeo because i initially thought at the time i mean i'd heard of travis scott but um i thought he was from atlanta mm -hmm. you know and the reason why i thought he was from atlanta was, was because he was hanging around atlanta dudes you know right. young thug uh quavo yeah. uh who else uh two chains you know those were his people you know the south people from the south and i mean yes houston texas sort of like you know location is but you know i thought he was from atlanta and when you listen to rodeo you kind of like get that you know that he spent a lot of time there that atl influence that atl influence was was heavy yeah it was very very heavy and even that album was a was a successful album um um because at the time he had the hottest you know and how can i t how how can i tell that he came from a producing background all i have to do is look at rodeo's credit list right okay look at those features that tells me that he already had a wealth a wealth of artists that he could collaborate with a mm. wealth of producers that he could collaborate with especially for a first album a lot of artists have first albums that are like okay slightly very uh like very I, I i don't know what the word is but like it's not big you know it, it's always like okay let's especially when we're talking creatively right we're trying to introduce ourselves yes we're trying to make people uh mess with us mess with us yes there you go there you go yeah <laughs> so with travis it was a different story it was actually the opposite where you know you getting these big platinum selling artists on on your first album so it was quite the statement it was a statement yeah it was it was a statement true to the good music tradition you know mm -hmm. they always trying to make a statement but isn't that the point right i guess i guess i mean but we all have different ways of tr how we're gonna make that statement right. i mean with me i think it's the logical thing to do to in, to want to or to deliberately want to introduce people to you on your first album you know what i mean i want people to to know who i am or the kind of artist i am so right. i'm just gonna go there and 
you know, introduce myself and 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 put myself out there, especially in a platform like that. True, but possibly remember because um, he's a hybrid, so he's not just an artist. Maybe it was uh, from a go. producer's uh, point of view, uh, also a way of making the statement. Yeah, because yeah. as a producer, being able to pull those kinds of big names in to create this movie bodes well. Yes, reputation wise. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's why I'm. Uh, I'm not even a gangster, yeah. right? I'm not a gangster. I think it worked and it worked well um, because he was already established mm. in the background. You know, he was already, already a guy. I remember um, a great example. I mean, although not quite hip hop, it's it's um, looking at uh, Zeke Bantwini's career. Mm-hmm. You know, he was like, yo, I remember there was a festival called A Rage for a Revolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was around, you know, HIV, AIDS, awareness. Like, it had amazing performances. Like, that was like, like, that was my first experience, you know, with with the whole festival um, environment. And there, El Vovo was doing his jam. I don't even know why I was watching El Volvo, but like, yeah, like it was it, like b- back when he was hot, hot, yes. you know, and boom, here is uh, Zeke Spantwini right next to him, like proper hype man playing his part, understanding the role, you know, and yo, man, it wasn't even long. It must have been a year. Mm. After I'm like, yo, that's a El Volvo's cat. Now he's his <laughs> own guy. You yes. know, he's doing his own thing. Why? Because during those times when he was doing the hype man stuff, he was getting into great relationships. He was getting people to to understand that I'm actually talented. I've got yes. I've got a thing about this thing, you know? And I believe the same sort of thing happened with with Travis Scott where his work just preceded him so much that everybody was like, "Yo, I'm trying to see what I can do with you. Right. And the power also that comes with that state of mind is that he was always open to it. Oh. You know, he was never a J. Cole where he was like, nah, I'm more worried, I'm, but I'm good. I got I'm going to do this myself, you know. And I'm an advocate of that because I'm an introvert, you know. I right. don't think J. Cole necessarily did anything wrong. He just wanted to channel his artistry in a, in a certain way, right. right? And I respect that. But you see, when you're working with people and you can manage, you can manage those people right. and you can direct this movie, you can change the world. And this is exactly what Travis Scott has been doing. He's been intentionally doing these shows, right? Especially after Rodeo. Uh, when you listen to um, Birds in the Trap sing McKnight, Man, you can hear that he has produced this album so that he can perform it. Yes. Okay. Which is a shirt so, that we've had before. I think it was off air. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he wanted he 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 wanted to make sure that the kids that that's who his focus was. The kids would be able to have the time of their lives. Right. You know what I mean? Like go to a Travis. Scott. I mean, I missed. Did you go to the Travis Scott while? No. Okay. Well, apparently we missed out because that was apparently crazy. I mean, seeing some of the video footage yeah. there kind of sort of like showed me that, okay, cool. He's a high energy performer. So you have to go there knowing that you're going to go there and lose your head. Yeah, I think that's yeah. why I didn't go. I like I like having my head on my shoulders. <laughs> it's just gone 18 minutes after 7 o'clock. We're going to take a music break and then we're going to come back and uh, shut down the producer's spotlight. Remember, at half past 7, we get into the Envey birthday celebration. So keep sending through your tweets for your requests for your favorite song by him or feature by him. That's happening from half past 7 to 8 o'clock. But for now, hold on to Wale, Wiz Khalifa and 2 Chains with a joint called Rotation. On the element, it's just gone at 24 minutes after 7 o'clock. If you just walked in, we're in the final bit of uh, the producer spotlight yeah. with Mr. Instro having taken a look at Travis Scott this evening. So how do we wrap it up? Where do we go from here to really, really drive home how incredible Travis Scott is? Okay, cool. First thing to learn from Travis Scott is you have to be confident, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a new world. It's a new beginning. Mm-hmm. It's a new everything Mm -hmm. producers are not supposed to be shy people right you understand because our role 
has become very uh much more important than it used to be Mm -hmm. do you understand and i think it also adds to the fact that um we have experienced um you know people belittling what a producer is true because of the fact that we're not confident enough half the time Mm -hmm. to claim that position which is why i'm always uh, advocating for people to see themselves as directors of movies yes. instead of just being a person who's contributing to the product you are responsible for that product which is why i mean in the recent weeks we've been seeing what what's been happening with uh you know how labels can quickly 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 make their star the pe- the person who's who's creating this music yes and just making him look like he's like the side guy or he's like an option or yeah you know what i mean like and that is is mainly because we don't take charge of this role that we have as producers Mm -hmm. so it's important for us to be confident enough to say no if you if that thing is not in my bank account if my fee is not in my bank account this whole thing is not happening i'll pull the plug right now exactly we need to be confident in the dopeness of our art love that right right yes confidence second thing is collaboration like i talk about collaboration you buzzword yeah every week <laughs> every single week look at what it did for travis scott yes the fact that he's his energy you know he was always looking to have conversations with people and and and, and learn from people and and allow himself to be vulnerable to say you know what i don't know how do you do that right right. that's so key especially in our space as producers because the world is constantly changing the system is constantly changing the software we use is constantly changing the we're not even using analog anymore (laughs) you know like i could i could say cool we'll go to a big studio go to downtown studios and have like three booths and have this huge ssl desk and at the end of the day i'm just gonna use my laptop i'm Mm. not gonna use the whole thing anymore you know because we have software that is just as good it may not give you the same feel or the same uh yeah it is the same feel it may not give you the same feel but it will make your music sound great yeah there's no reason for you not to switch to digital Mm -hmm. okay and also the advantage of being able to move around man south africa please let's make let's make an effort to have an industry that allows us to travel if you're a producer you need to see the world you need to be inspired by sounds different things sounds that you might not necessarily be exposed yeah. to in your everyday environment yeah we spent some time in malawi not so long ago and my mind was blown my mind was blown because of the influence because of the music that i was hearing you know i couldn't believe that people were so exposed to like yo they don't they don't care <laughs> yes it's there you know the pop and whatever it's there but they don't get they have their own sound and that kind of changed the way i look at my own music you know it changed the way i i thought about myself yeah. because the world is so big you know so don't be let's create a a, a a place or or an environment that allows us to see the world you know and and it's become so much easier with the internet you know we, we you can do this traveling just by looking at your computer and seeing what's there seeing what's there all right so there's one minute to go mr instro yes. what you gotta say uh good move with the kardashian that's that was a <laughs> that hey? was amazing that was that was incredible that 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 for me like yo let me tell you he's something my hero let me tell you something i think you're smart and i'll tell you why i think what? you're smart I think you're smart because you snuck that in with one minute to go. Now I can't get on you. No, like, you can't. What are you even saying?
Okay. No, you can't. All you right. know, I, it's fine. Can I can I please just end it off by saying, okay? Like uh, the reason why I admire I admire uh, the fact that, you know, he's with a Kardashian a or Jenner? Kylie Jenner. Oh, a Jenner. So yes. so so but it's Hey, get it's to the point. Thing. No, it's not get to the point. Uh, <laughs> uh when you start selling things. Yes. Okay? When you start selling things like your you, you have a modeling career and you have you, you you become a brand right it's important to uh surround yourself with people of who's trying to make money like you you know and if you're up for it yo maybe y'all can have a baby together you know Why all not? right mr instro <laughs> i think that's enough of that now nah, that's me that's me shout out to travis scott um Big, big fan. I love how his career has transitioned into something bigger than what he had ever imagined. So, yo, shout out to shout out to Travis Scott. Okay, shout out to Travis Scott. I'm enough of Mr. Instro tonight. <laughs> uh, he's done more than enough. So, it's just gone half past seven. We're going to play a song to close out the producer spotlight. Then, we'll get into... My joint. Uh, wow. The Envy birthday <laughs> celebration. <laughs> So we're going to play you Kanye West featuring you Pusha T, Kid Cudi, Common, DeBunge, uh, Raekwon and 2 Chains. Yes. It's called The Morning. Um, then I'm officially kicking Mr. Instra out because once he look at tonight. And then your songs that you have asked for as far as Envy's birthday is concerned are going to be coming up. The producer Spotlight with Mr. Instra. You can be a beat maker and not be a music producer. But when you're a music producer, you don't have to be a beat maker. Only on the 